Hello and welcome back to Grafana Online 2020. I'm Malcolm Holmes and I'm going to be talking to you today about Grafana Tanker. So what is Tanker? Tanker is a utility, a tool for interacting with Kubernetes. Uh, so for deploying resources to a Kubernetes cluster. But it can do a lot more than that, uh, as we'll look at also in this presentation. It can manage other resources that get pushed to uh, that are consumed by applications within Kubernetes. So in this case, we're going to look particularly at managing dashboards within a Grafana instance. Let's begin by looking at the life of your average SRE. So your average SRE spends a lot of their time living in configuration, be it YAML, JSON, any markdown, or yet more YAML. And we spend our time having to generate more of this. So in Kubernetes land, Kubernetes, as I'm sure you know, makes heavy use of YAML. YAML is itself just data. It's not, a, it's a, YAML is a markup language, it's in the name. Uh, it's not a programming language, so it's designed for describing something, but it's not d designed for generating. Here's an example of what we get uh, with this. Here's an example of some uh, some YAML. This is a Kubernetes deployment for a Grafana instance. As you can see, it's quite verbose. There's quite a lot going on. And if we look more in detail at the parts of this that are actually significant and matter to us particularly, uh, when deploying a Grafana uh, instance, you'll see four mentions of the name Grafana and one mention of the gra specific Grafana image. So as we can see, this is actually quite uh, quite verbose uh, and there's lots of boilerplate that we don't, we're not necessarily so concerned with. Moving on to Grafana dashboards. Grafana dashboards are themselves just JSON. Uh, so if you look under the bonnet, if you create, go to Grafana and you create yourself a dashboard, uh, you can go to the set dashboard settings and access the JSON for that dashboard, which you could then, if you wished, you could commit that into your version control. You could then upload it to another Grafana instance and it would still be, uh, it should work just the same. Of course, assuming you have necessary data sources available. Here is an example of, well, the beginning of a snippet of JSON uh, for a dashboard. As you can see, there's not a lot here about panels or, so you can see panels just beginning there. So uh, again, there's a lot of boilerplate, uh, a lot of stuff that we would like to, to hide and just as it were, assume uh, for when we're generating dashboards. Similarly, so uh, when we're working with Kubernetes, um, it's you know we, we may well have multiple environments that we want to manage. In this case, in this sample example here, we have three different clusters. So we have US East, US Cent EU Central One, and uh, EU West One. So in these in this scenario, uh, we're deploying Grafana to each of these clusters, and uh, the deployment, the, Graf the Kubernetes deployment resource is the same across all three clusters. However, as is the config map and the service, however, the secret, the data source secret and the ingress are going to be different. So whatever we use to manage our resources, we need a way to make this simple, something that isn't just, oh, let's have a different YAML file for each of these different clusters, because that quickly becomes uh, cumbersome. So what can we do about this? Well, what we can do is we can make use of a programming language called JSONnet. So JSONnet is a programming language that came out of Google. Uh, it's similar to a, uh, to a language and a system that was, that's been used within Google to manage their own infrastructure. So you could say that it was specifically designed for this purpose. So, JSONnet is a language for generating data. It's a language for, uh, it's a superset of JSON, and when you execute a JSONnet program, the output uh, is itself simply JSON. <coughs> so let's have a look at an example here. So we can see here we have 
uh, we have what looks like a sample in this code. We have what looks like a snippet of JSON. Uh, a few things to note, for example, we don't have to bother with the quotes. Um, here we see a local variable defined and here we see it used. And here we can see colon colon, which, uh, which says include this in the JSON tree, but don't send it to the output. And we'll see an example of how that can be useful in the next slide. So here we have um, some, uh, an example of some more JSON it. So on the left we have the JSON it, and on the right we have the JSON that it renders. So here we see the first thing we have is a Grafana colon colon. So this is an element called Grafana. Because it's colon colon, it doesn't appear in the output, which we can confirm there. It has these two elements. Then another element, images, which does appear in the output. It has within it another element called image, and it uses simple string interpolation percent s colon percent s into those it inserts the values within this array dollar here refers to the root of the json of json it so dollar dot grafana dot image colon dollar dot grafana dot version so we end up with grafana grafana 6.6.0 .6 like so similarly we have ubuntu we set ubuntu to self dot image self is where i am myself so that's images images dot image plus Ubuntu, and off we go. So this isn't the only way of doing this. We, if we look at the next slide, here we have a local variable, which is set to a snippet of JSON. And here we reference that local variable and we get its image and its version, and we get the same resulting JSON. There's a lot more to the JSON it programming language. So for example, what we're looking at here is a function. So we showed you a snippet of, of YAML previously uh, that shows a Kubernetes deployment. If you look here, we have four lines of code that say, create me a deployment, a new deployment with this name and this image. And we get all of that with the values correctly inserted. So how have we done that? Well, over here, we've got a deployment element so that's just a json element it has within it uh, a function which takes three parameters one of them is defaulted it's hidden so it won't show in the output and it returns a snippet of json and that snippet of json has a number of things replaced within it so you can see for example they're replicas are replicas and that's set to one because of the default over here So let's have a look at another feature. Here we have imports. So you can see we call deployment.new as we've done already. We add to it a snippet of JSON, JSON. But when we add it, we use this plus symbol here, which says don't overwrite extend. So we extend metadata by adding labels on. You can see that at work here. So labels, but the name still stays in place. We're not replacing the metadata element, we're extending it. And what do we set labels to? Well, we extend labels. So if there were any ex lab existing labels, they'd still be there. But we uh, extend it with whatever is in common.libs on it, and we take out the labels element. And there they are set there. And we get the resultant JSON on the right. So Let's have a look at how this works. Let me show you a quick demo of this in action. So what we need first of all is a Kubernetes cluster. So here I'll run a script that will create us a K3D cluster. Shouldn't take too long. Now this is all set up. Uh, all of the code that I'm going to show you is available in a uh, GitHub repo that I'll share at the end of the presentation. So if you find any of this interesting and want to have a look at what I've done, you'll be able to. So let's look. There is the cluster. If I do uh, shortcut get pods, there's no pods in this cluster at the moment. That's fine. That's what we'd expect. So let's change into another directory, tanker simple. So the first version 
let's have a look at what we have in this directory. So first of all, we have a vendor directory, which defines all of the files. Uh, so this is files that are imported into so ex external libraries, basically. And you can see we have two of them here. These are installed by Tanker by default when you initialize a project, uh, and they make interacting with Kubernetes much, much simpler. Then we have an environment. So an environment is basically one namespace within a single cluster. Well, that's the normal way in which you're likely to relate to an environment. It has a spec which says here is where the Kubernetes cluster is and here's what the namespace is. And it has a number of files here that we wish to, we're going to want to include and install alongside Grafana, so in some initialization. A file that says this is how you will deploy dashboards and here is a dashboard to deploy that way. But the most important one is this one here, main.jsonnet. So let's have a look at main.jsonnet. So what have we got here? So we have, this is a quite a substantial snippet of JSONnet that's going to install a Grafana instance for us. So uh, to install that Grafana instance, we're going to need two, Kube, two config maps, a deployment, and a service. So we're going to use this library, which we'll call k here, uh, and we're going to uh, add that to the root element so that we can refer to it as dollar. And we're going to create a, a sequence of shortcuts. These are just shortcuts. I could equally well use the full name in my program, but it just makes the, the code more concise. So with those standard Kubernetes resources shortcutted, as it were, I can now set a few default values. Uh, so here we set the number of replicas we want and the image we wish to use and now we set up our, da our config map. So we're provisioning config map. We use config map dot new, the function on the config map element, and we handed a name. This will create for us all of the boilerplate YAML that we need to create a config map. So your kind and your a API version, etc. Then we add on to that our config map with uh, uh, config map with data, which and we pass it in file name and we import one of the files and we import the second file so now we have within this particular config map we have two files available we repeat the same thing different config map name different file but same idea for the any file then we create a container so this container because a config a container is not a first class citizen within uh, within kubernetes uh, we create it as a local variable uh, and then we can consume it within our deployment in uh, uh, shortly. So here we have Grafana container. We set it to container.new, we give it a name and an image, but we then extend that by adding on container.withports and we tell it, please uh, expose port 3000 for me. Similarly, we extend it further by adding on another snippet of JSON, uh, which sets the uh, which sets the uh, environment variable telling Grafana where to find its config file. Now, so we've now got two config maps and a container. Now we need deployment. So we use deployment.new to create our deployment. We call it Grafana, tell it how many replicas we want, tell it the, the container or containers we want and give it labels. Bingo, we've now got a deployment. But we want to map, mount the config maps in there. How do we do that? Well, we've got these really neat utility uh, utility functions here. So this function, you no, know, if we want to mount a volume into a config map into a deployment as a volume, uh, we need to first of all attach the volume to the, the deployment, and we then need to map the mount the. Uh, we now they need to mount that volume into the container. So this can just get a bit tedious with rather a lot of config to set up. This neat function here, config volume mount, takes away all of that pain. We just say, we tell it a config map name and a path, 
and it just it goes and creates the volume it then iterates over all of the containers for the deployment and sets up all of the volume mounts as well so this is a good example of making configuration much much uh, more compact and finally we set up a service so util.service4 is another utility says go get me that grafana deployment we just created and make me a service for it and kind of wire everything up so that it works uh, and we don't have to worry about all of the labeling and so on it does that for us but we all, we also extend this one to, with the service port because we want uh, to be able to access grafana via port 80 and we set up a load balance oh, set the type to load balancer because that works well with k3d so if we invoke tanker now tk show environments default <coughs> we can now see the yaml that's generated for us you can see api version data kind config map metadata labels etc and the snippet the file that was imported similarly here we see a dashboard imported into a config map you can see quite how big dashboards can be eventually this will come to an end and we will see the kubernetes service definition so the four line three or four lines that we defined created this many more and similarly with a deployment this all of this deployment and you can see here the, conf the volumes and the volume mounts all created for us. Much, much more con concise in JSON it. <coughs> Excuse me. So let us do TK apply. Norm it shows us a diff, but no uh, normally I would review that, but not for today. So this has applied those changes, and if we do kc get pods, <coughs> we see Grafana arriving. So, so now Grafana is running. Let's get services. So we can now see the IP address that we we'll should be able to use to access Grafana. So let's switch to a browser. And here we go, we have Grafana running. Not only that, we click here, we see a folder called dashboards, and lo and behold, it has a dashboard in it. Here is our sample dashboard with random data that we've just successfully deployed. Uh, personally, I think that's pretty cool how quickly we managed to install <coughs> excuse me, that combination of Grafana instance and a dashboard. And obviously, seeing as we've installed one dashboard, we, that could have been hundreds. So let's go back to our slides. So what we've done is we've created uh, a and deployed a Grafana instance to uh, uh, to our Kubernetes cluster. That's great. But what if we wanted to deploy, excuse me, many many different uh, Grafana instances to this cluster or to many different clusters? Having to define two config maps, a deployment and a service and so on uh, itself is quite repetitive. So let's have a look at how we can go about uh, avoiding that, that particular bit of repetition. How can we make this code more concise than it already is? Well, obviously, we're going to use more abstraction. So to do that, we use libraries. So we've already seen the import command. Uh, so we can use import command to structure our own code. And then we can use a utility called JSONIC Bundler to consume public libraries. It's a very simple tool, but it makes a lot possible. Uh, we can use import to as well to extend existing libraries, so I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Uh, there's a public library that I've, I'll use in a demo that doesn't do quite, quite what I want, so I wrap it, uh, make some small adjustments, and away we go. 
So libraries enable us to encapsulate complexity, giving us a, a much cleaner, simpler way to access functionality. So here we have JSON at Bundler. Uh, it's a, 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 if you see the URL at the bottom, it tells us where to find that. Uh, that's on Git, available on GitHub. And here's an invocation of it. JB, JSON at Bundler, install a library from GitHub and it will go and download this library and install that into our vendor directory for us. So uh, what sort of packages and libraries might we want to install? Uh, so here you can see reference to a memcache library. But we can, ins we, so we can install, we can ha uh, have libraries that help us to create Kubernetes resources, uh, Kubernetes applications, so you know Grafana, Prometheus, Memcache, Cassandra, or we could have libraries that help us monitor things. So creating dashboards, uh, Prometheus configuration, uh, configuration for uh, alerts, and perhaps configuration for the new Grafana Cloud uh, agent. They're called monitoring mix-ins because uh, a mix-in is where you mix something in. You don't using you remember the plus we don't overwrite it we re we merge so a mix in when you add another dashboard you don't overwrite the existing dashboard so they're mixed in uh, <clears throat> and finally we saw dollar dot util we can uh, we can use ha build additional helper utilities that make life easier building things uh, that could be dollar util but it could also be that the library k that we've used to to manage kubernetes resources so let's see this at work once more. So we change directory, library. Let's have a look at what we have here. So in this one, we've now you can see here we've imported this library, Prometheus case on it, with JB, and we have the same libraries as we had before. And uh, this time I've now got a library, lib, uh, a Grafana lib, which simply wraps the, the library we've sh uh, shown you, the Prometheus case on it one, and makes a few small adjustments. So again, we can see here main.json it. So let's have a look at that. Environments default main.json it. So now you can see this has got, this is 10 lines long it's much much more concise so what's going on first of all k is our kubernetes library we import a library to manage and work with grafana we add these all together to the uh, to the root so that they're all that they all happen uh, what grafana does is it it, it consumes uh, an element called grafana dashboards anything it finds there it will automatically push to grafana and that's pretty pretty powerful so all we say is grafana dashboards plus colon colon because it's hidden so extend grafana dashboards adding it on a dashboard and we're going to import our json file so not only is this library going to install grafana for us it's also going to manage the installation of all of our dashboards oh and by the way it'll also handle data sources and notification channels and so on uh, all automatically just all config driven you just specify here are the things off you go and it does it for us so let's tk apply environments default it tells us what it's going to change we could check that in detail if we wished given it's just a demo i'm going to just say yes go ahead so now We can see it's created a new Grafana. Let's just wait for that Grafana to fully start and the old one to disappear. That's happened. So now we can switch back to our browser. Uh, we can go back home and have a look here. And this time we'll see the defaulter name has changed to GrafanaCon 2020. And we've got the same dashboard. This time, uh, this dashboard this Grafana instance and this dashboard were deployed to this Kubernetes cluster effectively with, with 10 lines of code. 
Now, if you ask me, that strikes me as being pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so carrying on. So we haven't really talked much about dashboards, have we? You know, all we've done so far, we've managed to deploy dashboards. We didn't really programmatically generate them. So how do we do that? So the thing to remember here is that dashboards are actually just JSON. And JSON is just data. And what we've looked at so far is a programming language for generating JSON data. So we're in kind of in happy land. So we can use JSONit to generate and render JSON dashboards. Doing that, we could talk about as dashboards as code. So let's look at this, this idea of dashboards as code. There are, there are some disadvantages. We don't have a user interface available to us. We don't have, uh, it, it can be a bit harder to get going because we've got to a few more things to understand. Um, it does require some coding skills. But on the positive side, uh, and the positives are, are, in my view at least, very positive, the dashboards travel with the code. This is really valuable. So if you have an application, you've written an application, and um, you want to, uh, and you deploy that to your Kubernetes cluster, now we can say with a mix in, we can say here are the dashboards, Prometheus configurations, alerts, everything that are, need to be deployed alongside my application. And you set up all of that Kubernetes configuration and deploy it. And now, whenever you deploy your in application to any other cluster, to any other environment, it automatically gets all of its configuration, all of its, dash all of its dashboards, all of its monitoring is all automatically set up. It's like the and, and your all of that monitoring is how you know that the application is from an infrastructure perspective, how you know the application is doing what you need it to. Um, so this can grant you a, 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 a far greater degree of confidence that the deployment of your application has happened. It has happened correctly. So let's uh, so next, as well as dashboards traveling with your code. It also gives you the capacity to create what I've called here abstract dashboards. So think of an abstract dashboard as a dashboard with a few gaps where we can fill things in. So you might want to change the metric on the dashboard or change the colors or the order or add an extra panel or so on. So abstract dashboards. On larger uh, Grafana instances, it, it's not uncommon to have what I'm calling here dashboard sprawl. So dashboards are so easy to create, so people create them. You end up with a lot of them. Uh, never, not always entirely sure which one is the mo is the one that you should be using. Uh, what this does is this switches us away from a oh go click and create uh, to a model where we use um, deployment models that are familiar to us as programmers. So Git and Git pull requests and so on is how we manage change on our dashboards alongside our code. So this reduces dashboard sprawl. It also makes it easier to manage dashboards at scale. So effectively, I wanted to deploy uh, my application with one dashboard. Doesn't make any difference if it's 100. You know, we can just run our uh, TK apply and off it goes, they're all deployed. So let's look at a dashboard. So we've got this dashboard here. Um, you can see that it connects to the Prometheus, um, public Prometheus demo system. And it shows some disk space, disk space metrics. Uh, and we've chosen particular colors and styling and so on. Here we have another dashboard, pretty much the same. If I switch back between them, you can see they're pretty much the same. Uh, all that's changed is the metric that's being displayed and the labels that describe the dashboard. So this is an example of an abstract dashboard. So to work with um, uh, dashboards, we can make use of a library called Graphonet. So Graphonet is just a JSON uh, a JSONnet library that we can install with JSONnet Bundler that 
makes it uh, allows us to interact with our da with dashboards and make dashboard creation far simpler. So let's have a look at this in another demo. So upper level tanker graphonet. Have a look at what we've got here. We've got now this time we've got as well as the stuff we had before. We can see we've got our graphonet library. There's quite a lot of it. Um, and you can see in our environment, we no longer have any files to import, but we have a library here uh, called lib dashboards. So I'm going to show you lib dashboards. First of all, we'll have a quick look at memory.libsonit. It imports a few things. It says dashboard.new. We pass dashboard.new and name and a UID. We tell it add a template, add a panel, uh, and add some targets and so on. So that creates our memory dashboard. But then if we look at lib dashboards disk space, you can see here this one, instead of defining just calling dashboards.new, we have a function that calls dashboard.new. And that function we can pass in a sequence of parameters. Those parameters will then be installed, you see here, title, new title, there's the title, there's the UID, and away we go. We create our, we create our dashboards um, programmatically. How does all this get invoked? Here we go. So again, we can see Prometheus. Uh, we, we install our Prometheus data source, which we're going to need. We add to the Grafana dashboards. First of all, we just import the memory.libs on it. But here we just use, we've imported disk space up here. We now just call disk with new, provide it with its five parameters, and away we go. So with seven lines of code there, we've managed to create a whole dashboard. Similarly, repeat that seven lines of code. We've got a second dashboard and away we go. So here in 22 lines of code, we've just installed three uh, uh, Grafana dashboards. And uh, so let's have a look at the environment's default main file. And now we have a K for, for Kubernetes, a Grafana for managing the Grafana. We import our dashboard library and we just say K plus Grafana plus dashboards plus an empty root and away we go. So this time it's now taken us five lines of code in order to deploy all of this, um, all of this. So a Grafana instance plus a data source plus three dashboards that we can manage as code are deployed in five lines. And if I wanted to, I could probably get this down lower to three probably. So let's apply this. So again, I could review the, the diff. I apply it. Now, in this particular setup, the, uh, <clears throat> okay, hang on a sec, let's see what's happening. It's just creating a new Grafana instance. So we wait for that one to, to have finished. It's terminating, so it's gone, good. Okay, let's switch back to our browser and let's go home and look what we've got here. Now, it may take a little bit of time. Sometimes this isn't quite, quite doesn't come quite. Okay, so what we'll just, I'm just going to go back to my other window. And just, just going to give the Grafana pod a quick nudge. It's now running. Hopefully we shall now see if we come here. So it has not yet found the Prometheus data source. The data source is here. It's being created. It is there. So I think it just takes a little bit of time to come up. And there you go. It's now found everything as we expected. And 
we can now come back here we can look at there is our disk space um, dashboard and here is our inodes dashboard all deployed in five lines of code so here is the link for the demo uh, for the code that I've used in this demo uh, please feel free to have a look and uh, yeah, I hope that's useful as an example of how you could usefully use Tanker. And if you want to find out more about Tanker, please do go to uh, tanker.dev. There's a really good tutorial there. Please let us know how you find it. Um, also, the Graphonit lib um, has issues and pull requests and so on, so you can interact with the Graphonit lib library if you wish to. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, please now, if you have any questions, would be very pleased to answer them. Please make your way over to the uh, Grafana Online 2020 uh, Slack channel where we can take more questions.